In this recording, I'm going to go over the typical procedures done at POS at the end of day or when the store is closed. Or if the store is being run shift based, then uh, the same uh, procedures are done after or at the end of each shift. This mainly revolve around uh, counting of tender types, uh, printing C report, and closing of what we call a POS batch, which is uh, <coughs> to make sure that uh, all transactions that belong together are, are marked the same way and, and grouped together. I'm going to log into the POS. And um, what you see here is the layout that I'm using. And you may see some, if you're trying this out, you may see some different layout. But the main thing for, for these operations is that you have these buttons here. Uh, There's six buttons here from declare start amount to close batch. And uh, if you don't, you can modify this, obviously, in AX, modify the layout of the POS and send it to the POS, replicate it to the POS. Or if you just want to quickly um, change the behavior of a button, you can right-click and select what operation it should be doing. Now, to show you this um, closing of a batch and, and, and all of that, I'm going to do a few transactions. So we have some transactions in the system. And I'm going to start with um, just the beginning of the day. If you are beginning a day or if you're beginning a shift, what you would want to do is you put uh, money into the drawer to use as change. So then you press this operation here, declare start amount. And let's say we put $100 into the drawer to begin with. And then um, you can start selling. Um, you would scan some item in or you select it from a list. and. Uh, and the customer pays for it, let's say with cash, it has the exact amount, and then that sale is done. And then uh, just continue to sell during the day. At uh, some point, you may want to remove money from the drawer. Then you would, um, or the manager comes and wants to remove money from the drawer. You can do a bank drop or you can do a safe drop. Uh, the bank drop, you would be taking the money, maybe putting it in a bag and marking it with some ID and sending it to the bank. Or you safe drop, you would be just taking the money and putting it into a back room, into a safe in the back room. Um, I'm going to do bank drop. <coughs> and what happens here is I see a form with um, uh, all the denominations of the default tender type they're using for the store. It's in this case, it's US dollars. So I see these denominations and I can, I can count those. Or I can choose to um, count different currency, or di uh, different tender types, either currency or all the tender types that are set up in the system. Um, in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna count and I'm gonna say that I have two ten dollar bills and one twenty dollar bill that I'm removing from the drawer. Or you can press total and just count count that uh, directly. Um, yeah, so I'm removing forty dollars to put to the bank. And I'm sure. And then uh, I need to put in the ID um, for that transaction. Now, um, let's do another sale. So we have, and I use a different tender type to pay with. So we have at least two different types in the system. Um, we use currency, Canadian dollars. And I do $5 here, pay with five. Get money back. And, and, um, now, uh, let's say the uh, store is closing, I'm closing the terminal, closing the bat, uh, POS. Then what I do in the end of day is I do a tender declaration, which is I'm going to count all the money that are in the drawers, or actually all the tender types that are in the, the drawer. And that could be, of course, the, the, uh, the default uh, US dollar, default cash, or it could be a foreign currency, or it could be vouchers, gift cards, whatever I have defined as counting. Um, I could have... Uh, credit card transactions in the drawer which I have marked as not needed to count and then they then they won't show up here but uh, I marked that for example I need to c uh, count the cash so let's say I have $50 left um, just one $50 bill close that and then right after that t counting the tender I'm gonna close the batch what happens when I close the batch is that the C report gets automatically printed, and that is actually based on privileges of the user, um, if you can print it or not. But it usually they allow that, so the C report gets printed on the POS, and uh, the batch is closed. So now all the transactions that I did 
from uh, beginning from logging into the pause and declaring the start amount up until closing the batch and marked with the same batch ID and this batch record um, holds the totals for everything a total of sales total of discounts and total number of transactions done on the POS etc and the very next operation I do on the pause may belong to the next batch now I wanted to show you the C report that gets printed so um, obviously I, that's not printed on the on the screen the, we don't have that capability I could save it to a file and show you but the very same layout is also possible to print from within AX so the POS batches are also pulled into AX as is every other every transaction that is made on the pause and the C report can be printed here as well now in the live scenario uh, live environment you will be um, pulling in the transactions maybe trickle feeding them into AX uh, from the pause every 15 minutes or so and that can be set up as part of the uh, batch framework but um, for this scenario um, this demonstration I'm going to just manually run that job and I'm going to pause while I do that okay so now I've run the job to pull in the transactions from the POS so all the all the sales and every transaction that happened on the POS is now in AX so I should be able to view them here in the transactions um, we started with the lock on then we did a float entry we did a sale backdrop another sale and in the end we did a tender declaration so these are these are basically the sales headers and here you can see all the details um, for these sales and you can drill down and see the actual sales lines payment lines and all other transactions related to that uh, particular sale if there were any other uh, done on the pos but the uh, what we we're going to um, go into was the pos batches so this batch is, a, this is the last one we did um, well, this is the one we did and I can go here into functions and I can print the C report I can also see the details of this batch as these are the, all the totals that were um, calculated and uh, put as part of this batch so printing of the C report so this is the same as I said same report as would was printed out on the POS and here you see the, the total amounts the total sales and if I had done returns etc what are the total taxes and, uh, and all of that um, the tender totals this would be it doesn't matter from what tender type it was it's just the total of all tenders uh, reverted to US dollars and here's the change that I, 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 I um, gave back here you see what I added to the drawer what I removed as a backdrop what I counted and here I, it's short of 18.08 so there was less money in the drawer that actually was received um, and then you see here the tender so for each tender type that was received in the post I get um, I get lines so we only used uh, the Canadian dollars and we used the cash which is the US dollars and for the for the Canadian dollars we collected five and we are short of five because I didn't count that I only counted the US dollars and here you then see the details for the for the US dollars now to see what happens afterwards in AX obviously these transactions now have come into AX they need to be posted so the finance and, and inventory is updated etc uh, for that you can view another recording called uh, statements and posting but this concludes the uh, recording on the end of day uh, thank you for watching